I just got word that my Pelican Catch Power 100 is in. I'm going to be picking it up after I get out of the office. And I didn't realize a 53-year-old man could still get giddy about stuff. Man, I'm so excited about this kayak. And uh, stay tuned. Well, there she is, the Pelican Catch Power 100. And as I said in a post on the Pelican group on Facebook, I'm as happy as a kid in a candy store. But I wanna share just a little story with you. So um, just to give you a heads up, I've been searching for this kayak for a couple of weeks. And <clears throat> so strangely enough, the places where it would keep popping up as available was uh, at a tractor supply, not at someplace like Academy. Uh, everybody's sold out of them, right? So I would call the store where they, where the internet said that they were available and inevitably they were always out. There was a problem with um, what was showing against what was actually there, right? I was gonna order it to have it delivered to the store, but they wanted to charge $90 to deliver it to the store. Uh, and I just didn't really want to pay $90 for a kayak that was going to be delivered to a store anyway, all right? So I was patient, started calling around, and um, so I called uh, a store that was probably 30 miles away from where I live, and I asked about the kayak, and lo and behold, he had three in stock. Only the internet said there was none, all right? Make a long story short, I went and picked it up. And so the point of what I'm trying to tell you is if you are in the market for one of these items, um, the Pelican Catch 100 power, uh, don't just rely on what the internet is saying, but call around because they just might have them in stock and the internet might be showing as nothing in stock. So don't necessarily always trust what the internet says. You've probably seen these kayaks in other videos, but I just want to go over mine with you. And the first thing, start up front, got a carrying handle here, um, nice and sturdy seems to be. And we got your Pelican emblem right there. Of course, the material is the same thing that the Bash Raiders are made out of, the patented Ram X material. There's a Scotty mount on this side and on the opposite side. Here you've got the battery cover and the connection here is a rubberized piece that attaches and it's gonna hold pretty good because I drove 30 miles with it and it didn't fly open. The wind didn't cause it to come open. And so the battery hatch opens up and it just lays back just like this. Those hinges, they just kind of lay back like there. Uh, here's your connection. And it does come with another wire connection to be able to hook your battery up or your trolling motor rather. And up here is an eight inch, eight inch hatch open it by turning it counter, counterclockwise and inside here it's a bag and it can be pulled out pretty easily and that's how big the bag is I can stick my forearm in there okay and inside here pretty roomy I don't know if I would put anything else in there because if you do if you put anything else in that hole you're probably going to lose it back into the back of the kayak and then you'd have to turn the kayak up on its front end to be able to get it back so putting the bag back in there seems to be pretty simple there's a little lip on there that keeps it from going all the way in and um, just fasten that turn it clockwise after you get it lined up of course now I will say that that's, that's going to be handy for me. It's going to be very handy because I can tell you right now there's going to be times where I'm going to be out. It's going to be raining. I'll put my cell phone in there. Um, other things that I don't necessarily want to allow to get wet. 
so that's that's going to be very handy right here is your tie down for your battery i'm going to try to fit my minkota power system in there my, my power box that puts my battery in there so it'll give me a couple of extra adapters if i need if i need it so this is kind of a padding um i think this is supposed to be a measuring tool but i'm not thrilled with it there's no <laughs> there's no uh indicators as to the length so i will probably end up using my own measuring system scupper holes here in and this kayak does come with scupper plugs to put in those holes so you don't have to go buy rubber golf balls i put the scupper plug in the front and i will uh, show you that at a later time okay so I gave in and went ahead and got the scupper plugs out of the front and they're spongy foamy and they're just a little bit oversized so that way you have to force them down in there which causes a good seal so hopefully that works I did see somebody else using uh, practice golf balls that they purchased at Walmart if those don't work and the practice golf balls were orange too. So these are black, they match well, but if I have to use orange, it will also match well too. But hopefully these will work. I think they will. They fit good. Again, uh, in this pack, you've got your base that the seat's gonna sit on that allows you to turn 360. And this bag here attached to it has got the wiring harness for your trolling motor. So I'm not gonna open that up right now. And here's your seat. Like I said, I, I pulled this about 30 miles or more home and um, nothing flew out, so that's good stuff. All right, so you've got um, your carrying handles here, which also serves as a mount for gear. And you've got two rod holders on each side. And I recently posted in one of the forums that uh, I am, I tend to be a less is more kind of person when it comes to uh, what I pack in my yak. But I like the idea that there are four rod holders. This past week when I caught my personal best bass, I actually broke my rod and I had an extra rod and reel set with me. So that worked out nicely. And um, there might be times where I want four rods to to use different baits without having to retie and so forth all right so moving back uh, right across there you see that's the plug-in for the trolling motor three prong and um, i just threw my anchor in there for weight on the way home but that is your transom and it's got a little lip right there so uh, i know some of you uh, may have had issues where uh, the trolling motor wasn't tightened and uh, it slipped off. I know I had that almost happen to me once, so I like the fact that there's a lip there that kind of keep that from happening. Right here are some drain plugs in the very back to, to empty water outside if water were to get inside the hull. And I can't imagine a situation where that would actually take place. We hope it doesn't anyway. So I'm going to have to as, as a uh, person in the news would say, I'm going to have to circle back on this one and see what's causing that not to work. All right, so there's two carrying handles here in the back. All right, and again, there is the patented Ram X ultra durable material that these are made of. And uh, again, I do have a bass raider that I've had for about a year and a half. And I'm pleased with it. And so I think I will be pleased with this one. That's the labeling that comes on it. I haven't even taken the uh, the advertisements off yet. I'm sure that'll just peel right off pretty easily. But there you go. This is rated for 450 pounds. The kayak itself weighs in at 87 pounds. And you got your 360 swivel chair that uh, that was one of the selling points for me I'm gonna be honest with you all 
All right, I'm pretty excited, pretty excited. All right, I'm in the process of putting the base on the swivel seat and it comes with instructions, but it's pretty simple. Uh, you just put this hardware, it comes with uh, eight of the uh, nuts and bolts and caps and you just put them in the holes on the base and you tighten it up and then you flip that over and put it on this base and do the same thing and tighten it up. So it's pretty simple. As I like to say, even a caveman could do it. All right, I've got the base applied. So you put the, uh, the bolt, a washer, it goes all the way through another washer, then the nut and then the plastic cap. You do that on all four of those and you offset these so that way you'll have room to tighten it. Okay, and so you wanna keep it offset so you can have room to work on the bottom and you'll set it on there. <laughs> this is not gonna be user friendly. Okay, so take that, stick it to the bottom of the frame and place that on top of it. <clears throat> and you get your washer. <clears throat> it's a little hard to reach, but it's not too bad. Place the washer over it and then get the nut. Put it over top of that. Give it a little hand tighten. And then what I like to do is get all four of them in there. And then I'll go back and take my 7 16 socket and wrench and tighten them up. All right, well, I have it partially put together. I have a seat in place. It's nice and stable, sturdy. And uh, it, as you've probably seen in other videos, it does slide back and forth. It can be tightened up on all four points by these orange knobs if you want it to stay in one place and not slide. Um, I went ahead and I put my 30 um, pound thrust Minn Kota on there just for fit uh, because I do not have my 55 pound thrust yet. I did have an issue though. Uh, I had this this plug and, I, and I'm pretty sure those things are universal. Um, this one is the one that came with the kayak. It came with it, but I already had this one installed on my other towing motor. Those are the same plug. And uh, only thing is, is that one is kind of a silverish color and this was kind of a copper color. This one, the one that I had, is very extremely difficult to get into this, to this uh, connection. But the one that came with the kayak goes in pretty easily. I'm concerned and I, I don't want to necessarily change my plug out because I want to save that one uh, for the new uh, motor once I get it. But I also don't want to tear this receptacle up so I'm a little trying to be cautious about trying to press it too much anyway I went ahead and put those scupper plugs in all of the holes I'm very happy with this the only thing that breaks my heart is it is uh, now nighttime and I cannot take it out yet that's the only thing well so anyway, there you, you kind of see the, the setup. Um, I've got my tackle box here. That's all the tackle that I'll carry. I'm gonna sit it back here in this space. And um, I'll probably have a third rod so I can at least have three different kinds of lures. I probably won't carry four. Probably three is the most. On occasion, if I decide to do some other type of fishing, I might take a fourth rod. Um, I'm very happy with this tra transom. I'm just very happy with this, uh, this rig. Uh, now, one question I do have is, um, I noticed that I didn't get 
paperwork with this kayak telling me what the hull number is. I haven't really looked yet, unless this is it. Oh, there you go. There's the hull number. That ZEP number, that's the number that I'm gonna need to get this thing registered. Yeah, okay. Well, there you go, in case you were wondering where to find your hull number. I hadn't thought to look for it until just now. So, there you go. Um, I guess that'll probably be it for this video. And the next time I make a video, I guess I will be on the water. But I'm not sure how soon that's going to be because we are getting ready to head to South Dakota next week. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Minnie has been keeping me... <laughs> been keeping me company this evening haven't you huh haven't you she's a good kitty she is mm -hmm.